now why local students, teachers, and artists are demanding action from the Madison Museum of Contemporary Art. Plus, new details tonight about the officer involved fatal shooting in Adams County. And later, as the election season heats up, what is actually allowed and what isn't when it comes to political signs? That's all coming up right now at 10. Thank you for joining us tonight. A group of UW-Madison students and faculty are coming to the defense of black artists they say were mistreated by a Madison museum. Tahali Omohadeen joined them outside the Madison Museum of Contemporary Art as they delivered their message for accountability. Tahali Eric and Charlotte, this all happened after a group of artists launched this website detailing, quote, shameful experience they had with the museum and a list of demands for change, including a review of museum contracts and policies, the removal of Momoka's executive director, and a public apology. It's an envelope addressed to the executive director of the Madison Museum of Contemporary Art. Dear Christina Brungart and the Momoka Executive Committee. Inside is an open letter signed by dozens of alumni, students, and faculty from UW's art and art history departments. We echo the collective in saying that your response is beyond disappointing. A show of support for a group of artists who took part in the museum's Wisconsin Triennial Exhibit, Ain't I a Woman, which sought to highlight black women artists in the state. I felt really disappointed just knowing the caliber of artists that have come through here and witnessing a moment where these artists were treated differently. Following claims of repeated mistreatment by the museum, including improper response to the damage and theft of one exhibitioner's artwork. By the end of August, almost half the Triennial's participants pulled out. Soon after, the museum released a statement apologizing for the damage to the Lada G's artwork, but called accusations of institutional racism, quote, inappropriate and unfounded. I would describe it like watching a fire start and be left unattended. But three weeks later, in a statement released yesterday, they said the following. Momoka's board recognizes that its apologies to date have offered little consolation. The board knows, understands, and recognizes the need for action. They say to that end, the museum has launched a truth and reconciliation project to address institutional racism within Momoka and the root causes of the conflict. I want to see these changes playing out because saying one thing and doing another thing is a behavior that I've, they have demonstrated before. For the remaining artists still participating in Ain't I a Woman, the exhibit will remain through the first week of October. Talio, thank you. Continuing coverage tonight, the GoFundMe set up for the children who lost both of their parents in a murder-suicide over the weekend has nearly reached $100,000 now. Initially, the campaign asked for $10,000 for funeral costs and care for the children, but the public has gone above and beyond. New details released tonight about an officer-involved fatal shooting in Adams County that happened last week. The officer who fired his weapon, Deputy Jacob Bean is currently on administrative assignment. He is a six-year veteran of the force. The man who was killed is being identified as 61-year-old Brian Childers. According to the DOJ update, officers got a call about an armed man walking down the road September 7th. When Deputy Bean approached him, Childers reportedly pulled out his gun. That's when he was shot and killed. Deputy Bean was wearing a body camera, though that footage has not yet been released. Investigators will turn over their report to the Adams County District Attorney who will then determine if charges will be filed. And new tonight, Dane County District Attorney Ishmael Ozan says he expects to announce next week whether charges will be filed against any officers involved in the controversial arrest and shooting of Quadron Wilson in February on Madison's east side. During a Dane County Board budget meeting last night, Ozan said he had reached a charging decision but did not say what the decision was. Taking a look over Madison tonight, we were treated to another beautiful day, but there are a few chances for rain as we get closer to the weekend. Meteorologist Chris Reese has our certified most accurate forecast. Hi, Chris. Hey, stop me if you've heard that one before. We've had several rain chances, several weekends in a row as of late, but leading into them, the evenings have been beautiful. And yeah, I just said it, this is another one. We're at 70 degrees right now, still seeing a light wind out of the south. Dew points are into the low 60s, so there's a little bit of mugginess to the air, but it's not unbearable. We'll continue to cool things down through the 60s overnight tonight. Waking up tomorrow morning, headed to the bus stop. Look for sun and temperatures that'll be right around 62. Look how quickly we begin to warm things up, though. We are back into the 70s by the time we get you towards 9.30 or 10 o'clock tomorrow. That being said, this is radar, and you see the showers and thunderstorms off to the west. This will be 
what eventually becomes our next rainmaker. High resolution radar is dry for now, but you look at those rain chances moving into the weekend and you do see them on the increase, perhaps some scattered to widespread showers Saturday night into Sunday. We'll break that down when we come back. The flag of the Ho-Chunk Nation now flying over Bascom Hill on the UW campus. In attendance, UW Chancellor Jennifer Manukin and Ho-Chunk Nation President Marlon White Eagle. The flag will fly for a week, then again in October to mark Indigenous Peoples Day and all throughout November for National Native American Heritage Month. Today, the Biden administration is touting a tentative deal that will keep America's trains moving and stave off what could have been another big blow to the economy. It is the result of 20 hours of negotiations between railway companies and unions at the Labor Department, which lasted into the early hours of this morning. The new agreement grants members an extra paid day off and time away from work for things like routine medical care and a 24% wage increase. The political fight between Republicans and the Biden administration over immigration is playing out between the states. Buses carrying migrants arrived at Vice President Kamala Harris's residence at the U.S. Naval Observatory in Washington this morning, and dozens of people arrived on charter flights at Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts yesterday, part of what Florida Governor Ron DeSantis calls a relocation program. We're not a sanctuary state. What would be the best is for Biden to do his damn job and secure the border. Republican governors interfering in that process and using migrants as political pawns is, uh, is shameful. Well, since the spring, Republican governors in Texas and Arizona have also transported several thousand migrants and asylum seekers to New York, Chicago, and Washington, all cities with Democratic mayors. On the campaign trail, U.S. Senate candidate Mandela Barnes is releasing a new series of endorsements from law enforcement. They come amid consistent attacks from conservatives on his stance on police and law enforcement policy. We have fact-checked those claims in our Reality Check series, which you can find on channel3000.com. Senator Ron Johnson is is also criticizing Barnes, saying, quote, violent crime is continuing to surge in Wisconsin. I will always stand with law enforcement to protect our communities. As this campaign season heats up, you'll be seeing more and more political signs around. And you may have even thought about putting them in your own front yard, but there are some things to consider. Our political reporter, Will Keneally, has the do's and don'ts of how to stake your political views. In Walworth County, we have seven, eight, nine different messages. It's an uphill fight for the Democratic Party. It's a Republican county, but also very rural, which means plenty of land and space for those messages. They are put out um, with owner's permission on, you know, good, good locations, and then they're rotated every few weeks. So it's like little mini uh, billboard. We caught up with them in Elkhorn this week to talk about their yard signs. We asked the state Republican Party too, but they didn't have anyone available for us. In Walworth County, Democrats say it's about choosing their words carefully to find common ground. Instead of concentrating strictly on the candidate, we are looking at values and how that ties into issues and how that ties into um, the candidates and why they should vote. This is absolutely the core of why there is free speech in the first place. That's UW Madison's Howard Schwaber. So you can do that in many different ways. March in a parade, sign a petition, or put in yard signs. People usually use yard signs for political expression, and political speech is, is what's sometimes called core speech. So if there is any kind of speech that's going to be protected, it will be political speech. But there are some limitations. Don't block traffic. Uh, don't be so loud that we can hear you five miles away, right? Don't light things on fire, anything, um, uh, even as part of a political protest. And in Madison, there are similar rules for what you can and can't do with yard signs. We regulate the method and not the message. And what that means is uh, size, height, placement, method of illumination. Matt Tucker heads the Building Inspection Division for the city, which checks to make sure that the yard signs are placed correctly. Placement that is unsafe, I think, is probably the most important thing. Um, Placement that may block the vision of pedestrians or, um, or vehicles at intersections around corners. That generally means keeping the signs on your property, 10 feet off of the street. There's also a season. If you have a bunch of signs, the city asks that they be taken down right after the election. You can generally keep one non-commercial sign up the rest of the year. But what about content? What if a sign contains swear words, for example? That's something that government is allowed to regulate in order to prevent children from being exposed to it. Schwaber says the key is to not be obtrusive. And the analogy is a nuisance law. 
uh, you can use your property. It's called quiet enjoyment. You can enjoy your property however you like, but not if it interferes with other people's ability to enjoy their property. Ultimately, there's latitude to largely put up whatever signs of support or opposition you want, whether you're a red dot in a blue sea or vice versa. So the billboards um, are important. These are important because people realize this is grassroots, this is homemade stuff, this is local stuff. That was Will Keneally reporting on the road to recovery. The U.S. government is updating its latest strategy to fight COVID-19. Today, the White House unveiling a plan it calls the Global COVID Response 2.0. The plan's objectives include vaccinating people with the highest risk and those who are hardest to reach. Also today, the Department of Health and Human Services launching an advertising campaign encouraging people to get the updated booster. New vaccines from Pfizer and Moderna have been formulated to protect against the most common Omicron variants making people sick today. And those ads target people 50 years old and older who account for 86% of COVID hospitalizations, 96% of deaths. Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky is calling on the U.S., Germany, Italy, France, and Italy to provide air defense systems to counter Russian strikes. Ukrainian officials are concerned that after suffering losses on the battlefield, Moscow is turning to missile strikes on civilian infrastructure. A recent Russian missile strike damaged a water pumping station at a major dam in central Ukraine. We're also seeing new images and videos of Russian tanks, armored vehicles, and other military military equipment abandoned by forces in their hasty retreat from the Kharkiv region. During the week beginning September 6th, the Ukrainian military claims it destroyed 590 pieces of Russian equipment. New tonight, sounds like we're keeping an eye on the Russian and Chinese navies conducting joint patrols in the Pacific ahead of an expected face-to-face -face meeting between Russian President Vladimir Putin and Chinese President Xi Jinping. Russian officials say the goal is to strengthen Navy, naval cooperation between the two countries. And looking ahead, President Biden will meet tomorrow with the families of two U.S. citizens, WNBA player Brittany Grinder and former U.S. Marine Paul Whelan, who are both still in Russia. The president has spoken with them before, but this will be the first time meeting them in person. More to come at 10. When we come back, Ford is unveiling its latest version of the popular Mustang. Plus an update on now tropical storm Fiona gaining strength in the Atlantic. Stay with us. Earn a 30 cent high V fuel saver for every $60 you spend. That's a 30 cent fuel saver this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Check out HyVDeals.com for more deals. First, we found out that radical Tim Michael supports Wisconsin's 1849 abortion ban. But you wouldn't support exceptions for rape or incest? Uh, that's correct. Now we found out his foundation funds a group working to outlaw birth control and ban abortion, even to save the life of the mother. And his family foundation funds a group that uses cell phone data to track women if they go to abortion centers. Vote no on Radical Tim Michaels. Chevy Silverado. It's got the power you want. And the capability you need to do the job, so you can get to the important work. Find new moments, find new roads. Get a $500 cash allowance on all 2022 Silverado pickups with a 2.7 liter turbo engine. Plus, now during truck season, get a $1,000 accessory allowance toward a new Chevy truck with accessories. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. The light at the end of the tunnel isn't shining so brightly for everyone. Families continue to fight for survival. Some jobs are gone forever. Bills pile up. But please know, you have not been forgotten. Your local Wisconsin energy and emergency rental assistance providers are working together to keep you safely in your home and your heat and power on. Apply now for a hand up. The Socialist Squad led the charge to defund the police and eliminate bail for dangerous felons. Now violent crime is surging in Wisconsin. More people have been killed in Milwaukee this year than in any previous year. Mandela Barnes attacked the Kenosha police and incited more violence. The officer's deadly actions attempted to take a person's life in broad daylight. This felt like some sort of vendetta. Mandela Barnes, dangerously liberal on crime. I'm Ron Johnson, and I approve this message. Earn a 30-cent high V fuel saver for every $60 you spend. That's a 30-cent fuel saver. 
this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Check out HyVDeals.com for more deals. Premier Week is stacked with star power. Now, prepare for Hollywood royalty. Please welcome the Queen Mix Viola Davis. On the next Jennifer Hudson Show at 3. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. Welcome back. A pretty cool opportunity for those interested in skilled labor today. A 53-foot tractor trailer making a stop at Madison College's Truex campus to help spark interest in welding. People stopping by could even practice making a weld using virtual reality equipment. Recent data shows the U.S. will need more than 80,000 welders next year. Mortgage rates have reached their highest level since 2008. Today, Freddie Mac reported the 30-year fixed rate mortgage now averages around 6.2%. Mortgage rates have been rising since the Federal Reserve began efforts to reduce inflation. The labor market has remained strong despite some slowing in other areas of the economy. According to the Labor Department data released today, the number of first-time claims for unemployment benefits fell for the fifth straight week. Initial claims for unemployment insurance were 213,000 for the week ending September 10th. More positive news, people in the U.S. are spending more money. Today, the Census Bureau reported retail sales rose unexpectedly by point. 3% in the month of August. That jump is being tied to the continued drop in gas prices. The report also showed retail sales were up by 9.8% from a year ago. Your Starbucks order, actually my Starbucks order, is going to get to me a lot faster. The company told investors this week it's taking big steps to upgrade and speed up service. So that includes new systems and machines. Starbucks also says it is going to offer new incentives for non-union employees. That includes student loan support, savings accounts, and more sick time. The company also plans to open 2,000 new stores by 2025. And check this out. Ford has an all-new Mustang and it's not electric. The 2024 model was unveiled in Detroit last night. It has a new body design and new engine options, but for now, we'll stick with gasoline power. It goes on sale next summer. Well, next tonight, a couple of weather-related stories we are keeping an eye on. Alaska getting ready to take a hit from the remnants of Typhoon Murbach. It's expected to become the strongest storm to impact the state in more than a decade. The National Weather Service in Fairbanks is urging coastal residents in Alaska to complete pre preparations for the storm by tomorrow morning. And in the Atlantic, tropical storm Fiona has formed and is now targeting parts of the Caribbean. Fiona, the sixth named storm of the 22 Atlantic hurricane season, according to the National Hurricane Center. Tropical storm watches are now in place for a number of islands, including St. Martin. And meteorologist Chris Reese joins us now. We do not have to worry about stuff like that. No, no. And I laughed because someone did email me about the rain last week. They said, was this like a named system or a remnant of a tropical? And I was like, no, nope, not at all. We just had the floodgates <laughs> open here in Wisconsin. It just seemed like it. <laughs> it right? did. And it was really windy, but mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot more calm tonight. Right. And we're going to see the rain chances this weekend. But even then, they are not what we saw say last weekend. So here's what I'm looking at right now. You've really got like a parade of systems working its way through and it's this next wave of low pressure that will ultimately bring us our chances for some showers and thunderstorms. The cloud cover already on the increase, especially from the south and west. Still, there will be some sunshine that filters through that cloud cover, especially moving into tomorrow. But here we go. You're looking at our rain chances over the next seven days. Saturday night, that's really the one to watch Saturday night and the Sunday, but still Friday night. We begin to introduce a couple of stray showers to the forecast at that point. Your better chance will be farther to the north and west, but still that chance will be there. Even on Saturday, most of your Saturdays dry, but I've given a slight chance to see a shower or thunderstorm on Saturday as well. And then you see Saturday night and a Sunday. This is when that better chance or some rain moves through. That should clear out as we start to move towards your Sunday night into Monday. Rain chances will generally be, or rain totals will generally be about a quarter of an inch to half an inch, really just depending on where you are. Again, last weekend we saw about four months of rain and a weekend in some parts of the state. That just will not be the case today. 70 is where the temperature stands right now. Winds in Madison are out of the south at about three miles per hour. Jane Sill, you're at 64. It's 61 in the Wisconsin Dells. Bear, a basketball, excuse me, also at 64. So a lot of 60s showing up at this point. Let's walk you through the rest of the overnight hours. Partly cloudy skies. You wake up tomorrow, 
you're taking the kids to the bus stop, you're beginning your morning commute, that's where temperatures will be into the low 60s at that point. But still, you should see sun. There'll be a little bit of cloud cover out there, but you'll see a lot of the sunshine too. We'll top out at 80 tomorrow. Some spots a little bit warmer as those winds are out of the south and west. Here's that chance for some of those showers tomorrow night into Saturday. So we'll watch that. Your Saturday itself, a spotty shower is possible, but most of Saturday is dry. Your better chance for any showers or thunderstorms is going to be farther to our north and west. Let's get towards Saturday night into Sunday now. You see a little bit more of the widespread chances for those showers and thunderstorms getting into the mix. Still not a big deal. But that chance is there. Then we go on a little bit of a roller coaster ride next week. Temperatures really begin to warm up by Tuesday. We could be talking temperatures in the mid 80s. Watch the shot of some cooler air that starts to dive in from the north and west. That will set up shop for the end of next week as we get in on a little bit of a chill. So that being said, for the rest of tonight, your overnight low temperatures go down into the 60s. Tomorrow, high temperatures will be into the low 80s, and then we'll keep that trend going through Saturday, really perhaps into Sunday. It all depends on how much rain we see. But then by the end of next week, we will struggle to get out of the 60s. And coming up in sports, keep building. It's a daily reminder for Columbus football to be their best version of themselves. Meet our coach of the week. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Born Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. By some measures, our economy is doing great. We've reached the lowest unemployment in state history. We have a record budget surplus. But there's another side, too. Rising prices for groceries, gas, and medications. Folks, that's a problem. That's why I have a plan to cap prescription drug prices, aggressively prosecute price gouging, and cut taxes by another 10% for working families. It's the right thing to do for Wisconsin and our economy. They say a good steak shouldn't be covered in sauce. That's why this prime rib is covered in fire-roasted peppers and provolone. But if you want sauce, it's in the bag. Arby's, we have the meat. In this blistering Wisconsin heat, imagine not being able to cool yourself by simply pressing a button. It may seem easy to imagine for 60 seconds, but for many, it's a reality they can't ignore after that minute is up. Families, elderly, disabled, and veterans struggling in the scorching heat of summer, and those are just the ones we know about. A hot summer day is not simply uncomfortable for them, it can be deadly. If you have the means to help, please consider offering a hand up. No matter the amount, every dollar helps. If you or someone you know needs a hand up, our energy, water, and emergency rental assistance providers are working together to keep you safe in your home. No one in Wisconsin deserves to suffer when we can help each other. A lot can happen in a split second. The car ran a red light, hit my vehicle hard. If you want all the money you deserve, remember the name Hupe and Abraham. There's a reason they've been rated best, and results matter. I'm glad I called Hupe and Abraham. I was very happy with the results. Tell the insurance company you mean business. Call 800-800-5678. Hupe and Abraham right now. A good lawyer shouldn't cost you more. They should get you more. Dear Senator Johnson, living on a fixed income, it's a struggle. I paid into Social Security and Medicare every paycheck. So it was a slap in the face when you voted to weaken Medicare. That would increase out-of-pocket costs. And when you wanted to let Wall Street gamble with Social Security. Senator Johnson, you look out for yourself and your fat cat donors, but have forgotten about us. SMP is responsible for the content of this ad. An eye care benefit card helps our members access even more. This includes a monthly allowance for OTC items and healthy food purchases. Plus, earn more with healthy rewards. Rest easy. Eye care is looking out for you and your health.
The Wisconsin women's hockey team lost a lot from last year's regional final squad. They have to replace the majority of their scoring and find a goalie. But there's no panic for Mark Johnson because he's got a card or two up his sleeve. Some of the new faces on his team returning are the returning from their Olympic redshirt year and bringing with them Olympic and national team experience. So actually, they're still loaded and plan to use last year's finish as motivation. We finished a little bit short of what we wanted to attain, and this year you bring all those kids back and everybody looks at their roster and says, oh my gosh, you're be really good. Uh, you know, that puts that you know, undue pressure on uh, from the standpoint of uh, we still have to go out and work. This program comes with high expectations, and I think every girl in this locker room knows that, but I'm just here to compete and play the best I can and hopefully bring whatever I can to this team so we can bring back a national championship. After finishing one game away from state in his first year, Andrew Selgrad has Columbus humming. The Cardinals are ranked second in Division IV and have outscored their opponents 206 to 19. But Selgrad is more focused on daily improvement, which is why he reminds his team to keep building. Set, go. Columbus football. You need to be aggressive. You need to fly to the ball, and you got to hit. Get has a certain swagger to them. Be stronger, bigger, faster than the other team, and just. Go out there and just win on Fridays. But don't mistake the confidence for cockiness. <laughs> because the Cardinals are always working to better themselves. We're not happy with the status quo. We're not happy with what we did last week. We're never content with just being average. That mentality comes from Andrew Selgrade. To answer your question, right? Who asked just one thing of his team. How do you do that? Well, you got to keep building. Ready, ready. Ready. Keep building. Oh, we always... Try to have A days, A practices, and so if, if we had a C practice, we're not going to keep building. <laughs> Stacking good practices on good practices. Our goal is to continue to get better every week. We want to be playing our best football come playoff time. So every week, you got to keep building. So when it's all said and done, the Cardinals are the best versions of themselves. It doesn't take much to be a great person, so he always just focuses on not just football at practice, but building us up as young men. Whether they're on the field or not. What do you do with those opportunities that are given to you? Uh, how are you going to build a legacy? How are you going to grow as a person, as a human? Hey! You do as Selgrade would say. Good. And keep building. And don't forget to nominate your coach to be our next Coach of the Week. Just head to the sports page on our website and fill out the nomination form. Or you can just shoot me an email. Remember, it can be any sport at any level. We're back after this. Coming. The Volkswagen Taos. German engineering everyone can get into. Visit your Volkswagen dealer today to learn more about the 2022 Taos starting at $23,495. Limited inventory available. Dear Senator Johnson, living on a fixed income, it's a struggle. I paid into Social Security and Medicare every paycheck. So it was a slap in the face when you voted to weaken Medicare. That would increase out-of-pocket costs. And when you wanted to let Wall Street gamble with Social Security. Senator Johnson, you look out for yourself and your fat cat donors, but have forgotten about us. SMP is responsible for the content of this ad. There are so many things we take for granted, and along with them, sometimes we take the people who depend on them for granted too. How can they survive with record increases in their basic cost of living? And through no fault of their own, they're being left behind. If you or someone you know needs a hand up, our energy, water, and emergency rental assistance providers are working together to keep you safely in your home. You may not ask for it, but we're here to help. Dear Road Rivals, every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care, our no-cost maintenance plan that covers tire rotations, engine oil changes, fluid adjustments, and more for two years or 25,000 miles. Nissan charges extra for maintenance. And you guessed it, Ford charges extra for maintenance. At Toyota, we take care of our drivers. Too bad none of our rivals do the same. Join us, Toyota. Toyota, let's go places. 
Stewart's has been crafting beautifully designed functional furniture since 1941. Every aspect of Fjord's furniture has been carefully engineered to create a higher level of relaxation. Right now at the Century House, purchase any Fjord's furniture and receive up to 20% off. All models, all sizes, all colors. Experience the unmatched relaxation you can only achieve in Fjord's furniture. Relaxation made beautiful. Visit the Century House at 3420 University Avenue in Madison or online at centuryhouseinc.com. Look, we knew the other side would make up lies about me to scare you. Now they're claiming I want to defund the police and abolish ICE. That's a lie. I'll make sure our police have the resources and training they need to keep our community safe. And that our communities have the resources to stop crime before it happens. I'll bring back manufacturing. And I'll pass a middle class tax cut. And if that's too scary for Washington, then so be it. I'm Mandela Barnes, and I approve this message. It's a lovely day to Cars built with safety in mind. Even for those guys. Visit your Volkswagen dealer today to learn more about the spacious 2022 Atlas. Limited inventory available. Wake up with News 3 Now this morning. Weekday starting at 4.30. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. Finally tonight, the future was on full display today at the Detroit Auto Show with the world's first flying bike making its United States debut. Japanese startup Airwinds Technologies created this hover bike, a vehicle capable of flying for 40 minutes and reaching speeds of up to 62 miles per hour. That sounds like trouble. It's already on sale in Japan. The company's owner says he plans to bring a version of the hover bike to the United States in 2023. That's going to be flying over Madison. For you. <laughs> How do you strap I see Chris Reese and the weather yeah. team oh my out there gosh. in a storm just <laughs> trapping <laughs> stuff in the hover bike. You could catch the me in a snowstorm. That's new story. Right. Now hover bike with Chris Reese. With new Sky 3 now. That's like exactly it. what it would be. All right, as we look towards tomorrow, look for more sun. Temperatures stop out around 80. Same deal on Saturday, but we could see some showers and thunderstorms Saturday, and then especially Saturday night and into Sunday. All right, Chris, thanks. Thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 10. Do something good, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.